Hello, and welcome to Thoughts on International Business, Marketing, and Strategy. I'm Charles Scuba. I'm a professor at Georgetown University's McDonough School of Business, and I'm joined today by Dr. Oded Shankar, who is the Ford Motor Company Chair and Professor of International Business and Management at the Fisher College of Business at Ohio State University. So welcome, Dr. Shankar. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here in Washington today. Uh, Dr. Shankar is the author of a new book, which uh, is uh, gaining some attention uh, for its contrarian viewpoints. The book is called Copycats. And in Copycats, Dr. Shankar extols the virtues of imitation as opposed to innovation. Now, the word innovation here in Washington is much on the lips of policy officials, including our president, as well as um, it's much discussed and uh, uh, highlighted by our business leaders as well. Could you describe what you mean by imitation? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I paint imitation with a broad brush. I mean, I look at imitation as the copying, replication of a product, of a process, of a business model. Uh, it can be an exact replica. It can be a fairly broad brush type of imitation. So I take a fairly wide angle to, to the phenomenon. Well, I know that uh, you are uh, an expert also in China practices and uh, uh, China management practices. And uh, you are also a member of the U.S. Um, Strategic and Economic uh, Commission that just recently reported its uh, 2010 report to Congress. Um, now, the Chinese are masters of imitation, if I uh, make yeah. a generalization. I, I, I think you can certainly make that generalization, and I think this is what makes the phenomenon not only so interesting, but also so important, because one could certainly argue and provide evidence for the U.S. being the world foremost innovator, China being the world's foremost imitator. So innovation and imitation is at the heart of our competitive advantage, and it is also at the heart of the relationship between the two countries. Many say that the United States uh, needs to focus on innovative new technologies, research and development, because we shouldn't be competing in low margin, um, high labor cost industries. What is your reaction to that? To that? I, I beg to disagree. Um, in a sense that, yes, I think we should continue to innovate. But if we think that we're going to keep getting out of more and more segments, seeding more and more portion of the market, where are we going to end up? Are we going to end up like Gucci, just catering to you know, the uppermost sliver of the market? I don't think it's a wise approach. Well, I, I, if you were to ask our average MBA student here at Georgetown, if they had a new idea for a company, I would guess that many of them would immediately say, well, yes, we're going to produce this new product in China. Um, why should they turn somewhere else if, if they can't achieve lower costs of production? Why should they look domestically? Uh, because uh, they are engaged in uh, short-term thinking. They're going to produce the product in China, and in no time, they're going to find out that a competitor product a copy or an adaptation going to appear not only in China. One of the major errors people make, they think, okay, I'm going to lose the Chinese market. You don't want to lose the Chinese market because it's a giant and growing market. But increasingly, you will be sitting in international markets as well. So you're going to move production there. You're going to make it easier for them to basically replicate your product. And in no time, you'll find yourself out of business. The um, um the Joint Commission on China, Commerce and Trade, the United States government and the Chinese government engage in a series of dialogues. Among them is the JCCT, which was completed here in December uh, in anticipation or to precede the visit by President Hu. Um, in that, the United States, in this dialogue, the United States was pressuring the Chinese government on the subject of indigenous in innovation policies. Uh, and government procurement policies that discriminate against American companies doing business in China. Uh, you were one of the key uh, or a, a key uh, principal in that report, or you certainly testified to that effect. 
Um, are we making headway with the Chinese in, in improving their, their policies? I believe not. I um, indeed listed indigenous innovation as one out of 10 major uh, barriers put before our companies by the Chinese. Indigenous innovation is certainly a, one of the more important element, but by no means the only one. Uh, and I'm afraid that we are not making uh, headway. Um, every year I meet people who, uh, when I'm saying people, maybe government official, maybe senior company executive, who tell me that the situation has been improving, uh, only to find out that uh, it did not. I was a member of a vocal minority years ago. They did not see any improvement, uh, and I remain so, you know, right now. People look at some phenomena, and they draw their own conclusion out of it. They see the Chinese, for instance, suing an imitator of uh, Starbucks, and they say the world has changed. But there are very, very good reason as to why the Chinese were willing to uh, make a judgment against that particular imitator. And I can right now take you to I don't know how many places in China where you will see Starbucks imitations. I know before President Hu's visit, uh, there was a great demonstration in China by the government of, of confiscating uh, uh, fake or counterfeit DVDs and the destruction of those DVDs. Um, yet many American companies on a regular part, on a regular basis, continue to risk IPR infringement they, because of the promise of the Chinese market. Uh, is, the, is well, I believe, a Coca-Cola executive recently described China as the commercial opportunity of the 21st century, a mass emerging middle class of 300 million people eager to buy new products. Um, is this too risky for American products? No, American they're very products? eager to buy new product, but I think be, uh, it will be an illusion to believe that they're going to buy your products. They uh, definitely have a huge market, a growing market, and they use it as a bargaining chip. You want to sell here, you will transfer your technology. I happen to believe that this is also a violation of WTO accession agreement that China has signed on, but apparently they argue that the Chinese version um, you know, implies something else. But uh, in any event, they're going to make sure that the market goes to their companies. They're determined to do that. I know the Chinese government uh, has national champion industries and national champion businesses in certain industries. Uh, and the Chinese are determined to establish uh, higher value brands uh, that, and not just be the low cost manufacturer, uh, whether it be Fruit juice, where Coca-Cola was denied the uh, opportunity under the new anti-monopoly law to purchase, I believe, Huiyan Juice uh, Company, or whether it be in uh, solar cells. Um, are the Chinese making inroads in new technologies? Absolutely. And if you want to think about their imitation capabilities, because my view is that imitation is an intellectual activity that require, you know, tremendous capacity, which is not what we teach in our business schools, unfortunately. Uh, the Chinese have successfully copied a Russian fighter aircraft. I think that tells it all. If you can do that, what makes you think that they cannot copy anything else, whether it's, uh, you know, an electric turbine that, that uh, you know, GE is selling them, a car that, that uh, GM is co-producing with them. They can copy just about everything. Should U.S. companies be imitators? I believe so. I believe that once we were very good imitators, I think we have lost this capability. And one reason that we lost this capability, uh, because we used to take, say, European product and, you know, make them better, mass produce them, sell them to the world. We have lost this capability, among other reasons, because I think we all worship this goddess of innovation that Ted Levitt has, has warned us about 50 years ago. Well, uh, uh, I know that in the 19th century, the Europeans would always accuse the Americans of imitating, so. Absolutely, absolutely. Charles Dickens is still looking for his royalties. <laughs> well, Dr. Shankar, thank you very much. This has been a, an interesting uh, point of view. I'm looking forward to reading copycats in depth. Uh, I've had a good chance to look it over, but this will be wonderful. Uh, mm. Thank you, thank you for coming to Georgetown. And thank you for joining us today. Thoughts on international business, marketing, and strategy.